I'm gonna keep it real with you. Painting PC parts can be a tedious process if you're uncomfortable with component disassemblies. I say that because, as you'll see in this video, the actual painting isn't all that complicated. It's the disassemblies of each of the components that we're going to paint that can take some time. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint your graphics card, your VRM heatsinks, and a few spare case components. The video card we'll be disassembling is a G1 Gaming Edition graphics card from Gigabyte, and it's probably one of the most complicated video cards to disassemble. You'll see that in the coming steps. The VRM heatsinks, well, are the VRM heatsinks, and the few case components we'll be painting are the hard drive covers included with the P400 that were originally black that we'll paint white. So with that, let's start disassembling. Depending on your motherboard, you'll either need a pair of needle nose pliers or a Phillips screwdriver. In my case, I had to push the retention pins back through the motherboard to remove the heat spreader. In your case, you may only have to remove a few screws from the bottom of the board. Carefully remove the thermal pads on the bottoms of each and place them somewhere you won't lose them. I also had to remove the retention pins from the spreaders, but if yours were held into place with screws, you won't have to worry about this. We're going to paint these heat sinks first, but you can paint everything all together if you so desire. Prepare a safe place to paint. As always, a sealed environment is preferable, but I'm a baller on a budget, so I crafted a makeshift paint studio out of an old Newegg box. Your results may vary. Collect your VRM heat sinks, lay them face up as this is the side you'll be seeing the most, and grab a hold of your paint can. I'm going to try good old engine enamel this time around for a slightly different finish, although Plasti Dip would work just fine, I can speak from experience. If you're interested in that video, go ahead and click the card up top. According to the directions, you'll want to spray approximately 8 inches away from the target. Shake the can vigorously for a few minutes, provide a few test sprays to get familiar with how the can spray will affect the paint itself and then begin by repetitively applying light films of paint across each heatsink. You'll want to begin spraying while pointing away from the target and only stop spraying once you've completely crossed over to the other side. This method will prevent overspray and ensure even layers of paint are being applied with each pass. Here's about what they should look like after one coat. Wait approximately 10 minutes for each coat to dry and then repeat the process once more and then once again, paying special attention to any areas you may have missed during the first set of passes. Also never ever 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 touch the target while it's drying. Any doubts? Don't touch the thing. Any fingerprints or smears will be a pain to remove later on. This entire process may require 3 or 4 coats. So now, let's move on to the graphics card and case components. Get ready for a bumpy ride. Remove the items you wish to paint. In my case, it was each of these hard drive covers. Now, these won't be difficult to paint at all. These are included with the P400, as well as the Gigabyte graphics card. This will be a pain to disassemble. This card requires complete disassembly if we're to paint both the front shroud and back plate. Start by removing the six accessible screws on the back plate. Four of these secure the heat sink to the PCB, and the other two secure the back plate to the rest of the card. With these screws removed, the entire top half of the card can be removed. This may require a bit of force if the thermal grease is relatively unforgiving, as was mine. With the two sections now apart, disconnect the fan connector and both LED pins from the board. Needle nose pliers may again be necessary. Disconnect the heatsink from the front shroud by removing the two screws up top as well as the two towards the back. The two pieces should now disconnect with ease. Now remove the nine screws, three under each of the three fans, being careful not to cut into or completely break individual blades. This would be absolutely disastrous. I don't advise painting fan blades as any added weight can offset ball bearings and increase overall drag. 
Remove the WinForce logo by unfastening the two screws up front. Simple as that. And finally, remove the screws securing the PCB to the back plate. There should be five in total. With that, we've got the rest of our parts to paint. Our four hard drive covers, the graphics card backplate, as well as the front shroud. Let's take them outside. The process, again, is straightforward. After shaking the can for a minute or so, hold it roughly eight inches from the target and conduct brush stroke motions across them. Try your best to apply even coats and avoid overspray if at all possible. Be sure to allow 10 minutes in between coats and a few hours for the final product to completely dry before reassembly. Speaking of which, before we officially reassemble these things, let's swap out our GPU's stock thermal paste with a better compound. Grab high concentration isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth, dab a small amount of the solution onto the cloth, and gently remove the stock thermal grease. Repeat this process a few times until both the copper pipes and the GPU itself are both shiny and dry. Take your third-party thermal glue, in my case Arctic Silver 5, you can never go wrong with Arctic Silver 5, and apply a copious amount over the dye. Now don't absolutely drown the chip with grease, but be sure that the entire dye is ultimately covered with the compound. You can verify this by placing the heatsink over the GPU and allowing the glue to spread itself over the dye. If it ends up completely covered by glue, then you've applied enough. The rest of these steps are literally the exact opposite of those aforementioned when it came to disassembling. Reconnect the backplate to the PCB, attach the fans to the front shroud, attach the front shroud to the heatsink, reconnect the three headers, one for the fans, two for the LEDs, to the PCB, and finally re-secure the card by reinserting the six screws on the back of the graphics card. Wow, what a beauty, what a final product. Go ahead and re-secure the hard drive covers to the tower chassis, being careful not to remove any paint while turning the screws. The graphics card should also be a straightforward installation, I'm not going to waste your time here. Close it up by reconnecting the power connectors, reduce sag if at all possible, and finally, admire the final product. I have a personal fetish for white, because white takes on the color of anything else that you shine at it. So in this case, I have an RGB LED kit from Deepcool running the top and side of this case, and basically whatever color I set the computer to, or whatever color I set these LEDs to, you can see that the computer as a whole takes on this color scheme thanks to the white accents. So it's nice to see all of that kind of culminate into a final product like you're seeing behind me. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you think that the steps were clear and concise and you like the end result. Give the video a thumbs down if you hate everything about life, and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.